what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 times wwe foolishly buried their own champions now for some odd reason wwe from time to time tend to bury their champions you're probably asking why would they do such a thing my response would be i don't know the one time i can think offhand of course is kofi kingston getting buried by brock lesnar on the debut of, on fox network never made sense to me I don't think it made sense to a lot of people. It was just kind of like a damn, that's kind of messed up that you would bury a guy that's had the championship since WrestleMania only because you want to push Brock being on Fox on SmackDown. So, screw Kofi, right? So, but we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. And uh, let's get right into this video. WWE Superstar wins a championship, they should be presented strongly so their title run obtains legitimacy and worth. However, WWE sometimes decides to outright bury their own champions. Yep. The champion in question can fall out with favor with WWE management or sometimes a superstar is only made champion out of fan pressure and intense popularity. So in turn, WWE could do everything they can to weaken the popularity of the superstar, damaging their credibility and star power as a result. But which champions were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE buried their own champions. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos sure and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. <laughs> Number 10, Jack Swagger. Oh, Jack Swagger's world title run in 2010 sense, yeah. actually started off pretty well. He would achieve victories over Chris Jericho, Edge and Randy Orton and this was before Vince McMahon outright gave up on the reigning world champion. Swagger would suddenly begin to lose every match on mm -hmm. television. He would lose to the likes of The Undertaker, John Morrison and Kofi Kingston and all of this killed his credibility as a legitimate world champion. By the time the Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view came around in June of 2010, all hope was lost for Swagger as fans simply couldn't take him seriously anymore. He would drop the world title to Rey Mysterio in a fatal four-way match which also included CM Punk and The Big Show. It was never made clear why Vince decided to bury Swagger but some fans believe that Swagger never regained the credibility following his disastrous world title run. True. Number 9. Kofi Kingston oh, yeah, you When knew WWE booked Kofi Kingston you to knew defend the WWE title against Brock Lesnar on SmackDown's 20th anniversary episode, fans assumed that Lesnar was going to end Kofi's enjoyable title reign. However, they didn't expect Lesnar to completely squash Kofi in just yeah. 7 seconds. Fans expected a back and forth competitive match with Kofi almost conquering Lesnar, but WWE had other ideas. The squash completely killed Kofi's credibility yep. and it made fans question the legitimacy of his title reign. WWE even decided to debut Cain Velasquez after Lesnar's victory, meaning Kofi became an immediate afterthought. Yeah, he was just an WWE's afterthought. presentation of Kofi following the controversial loss was heavily criticized as Kofi never got a rematch against Lesnar, nor did he seem remotely bothered that his length. And that's the problem. <sighs> did we think Kofi was going to win? No. Did we, were we hoping we we're going to have a, a decent, somewhat of a decent match? Yeah, sure. He gets squashed in a few seconds. Enter Kane Velasquez. I, I think I mispronounced his last name. Whatever, who cares? And then he just doesn't care about getting the championship ever again. Just forgot about it. No comment. The title reign had ended in just a matter of seconds. Second. Number eight, CM Punk. The 69 day world title run of CM Punk in 2008 is often forgotten about by many fans. The main reason for this is that it was so unmemorable. Mm -hmm. Punk's world title run came at a time when John Cena and Batista were still on Raw and they were both a lot more over than Punk. This meant that Punk's world title run was never a main focus of WWE programming and he was virtually buried as a world champion. It, it Punk wasn't. would last a total of three pay-per-view events as world champion, the first being Great American Bash where he and Batista would wrestle to a double DQ. The second win was over JBL at SummerSlam in 10 minutes and the final most infamous pay-per-view appearance as world champion saw Punk get punted in the skull by Randy Orton at Unforgiven and he'd be taken out of his planned world title scramble match. The run was a complete flop and WWE never made any genuine effort to make Punk appear as a legitimate world champion. Number six This is true. This is one of the reasons why uh, Punk was having issues with them because he was the world heavyweight champion 
but he didn't feel like the world heavyweight champion because they didn't make him a big deal. They they weren't trying to put him at, you know, he wasn't really main eventing. Like, they didn't really, he was like an afterthought to them. Seven Jeff Hardy. Our fans were delighted when the beloved Jeff Hardy yep. finally captured the world title at 2008 Armageddon pay per view. Great Hardy was insanely over with fans, and fans anticipated that he would head into WrestleMania 25 as WWE champion. However, his title reign just lasted 42 days. Hardy's reign, instead of being filled with exciting title defenses, were filled with a bizarre storyline which saw Hardy get involved in a range of accidents, which ranged from him being driven off the road to his pyro malfunctioning. Hardy would drop the title in his first defense. He lost to Edge at 2009's Royal Rumble pay-per-view after his brother Matt turned on him. Mm -hmm. It was clear to the fans that WWE had zero plans to make Hardy a credible WWE champion at this stage of his career. Missed opportunity. And this explains why they decided to bury his title run as quickly as humanly possible. Number six, Miss, Dolph Ziggler. One of the most memorable Raw after WrestleMania moments occurred in 2013 yes, when Dolph Ziggler cashed Cash in, in his money in the. That was. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that was probably one of the loudest pops Dolph Ziggler ever got, and that was probably one of the loudest pops in like Monday, the the Raw after WrestleMania. Like that pop when he came out was immense. When he won it was stupid, bro. Oh man. The bank briefcase to win the world title. Well, the issue here was that Vince and WWE never really saw Ziggler as a main event level talent, and his world title run showed this. The week following Ziggler's world title victory, he would lose a non title match to Jack Swagger on Raw. This was evidence that his world title run was going to be filled with non title losses, and Ziggler would have to fight for any means of credibility. A few weeks into his title run, Ziggler suffered a serious concussion, which put him on the shelf for a month. When Ziggler returned, WWE decided to immediately take Take the world title off him. Ziggler would drop the world title to Alberto Del Rio at the payback pay per view, and unfortunately, he would never receive another run at the very top. And it sucks because Dolph was so talented. We wanted to see him at the top, and they just they didn't care. They didn't care for Dolph. They just didn't. Simple as that. They didn't feel like he was a main Top event guy. the WWE ladder. Number five, Cesaro. Oh, Cesaro's 2012 this. US title run was a huge letdown. What should have involved Cesaro bringing major credibility to the US title instead featured him seemingly losing every non-title match on television. Cesaro would be US champion for eight months and he was mainly used to put over other talent. He would lose to top WWE talents such as Randy Orton, Sheamus, and John Cena, and these may have been forgivable if Cesaro obtained other victories, but this wasn't the case. He would lose to every talent possible. He would lose to the likes of Santino Marella and Justin Gabriel, all of who seriously buried his run as US champion. Number four, Karrion Cross. In the summer of 2021, it was announced that Karrion Cross was making his main roster debut. Cross was the reigning NXT champion, and fans expected him to become yep. a major star on the main roster. Cross debuted on the July 19th edition of Raw, and rather shockingly, he lost to Jeff Hardy in just under two minutes. This completely killed Cross's legitimacy. <laughs> it destroyed him. I don't care what nobody says. Your debut on the show, the main roster, you're still the NXT champion, and you haven't lost in the NXT, and you get to the main roster, you lose to fucking Jeff Hardy, who I love, but you lose to Jeff Hardy, and you lose to a, Jeff Hardy cheated, he hit a roll up and used the ropes as leverage, he cheated, you still lost your debut match. If you didn't want Jeff to lose, you could have had him face any jobber. But you had him lose. And from there, it was done. He was dead. On NXT, it didn't matter. They were, they were over there chanting Jeff Hardy. It's over. It's done. He couldn't recover from that. Like, you, you're not a big threat, bro. Jeff Hardy's beating you in two minutes. No disrespect to Jeff. Jeff is a legend. But come on now, bro. He's beating you. He's He beat you in two minutes. That shouldn't have been happening. They should have had at least a decent match, and then you could have had Karrion get the win. See, and it also completely buried the top champion of the popular NXT brand. Cross's presentation would be dramatically changed following the loss, and fan perception of him and his character quickly soured. And of course, that goofy outfit didn't Fucking help. Mass. In November of 2021, Cross would be released by WWE, that which caused awful. a lot of outrage on social media for how WWE completely failed the talented superstar. Number three, Christian. Mm. When Edge retired in 2011, WWE urgently needed a top babyface for the SmackDown brand. Their plan was to crown Christian as the world champion at Extreme mm -hmm. Rules, which would cement him as the top babyface on the brand. 
On the SmackDown following the pay-per-view, new world champion Christian will be challenged by newly drafted superstar Randy Orton. Christian would then be forced to face Randy Orton on the show, and WWE actually decided to have Christian lose. That's right, Christian lost the world title just a few days after winning it. Now, it's common knowledge that Vince McMahon wasn't a huge fan of Christian, but nevertheless, to bury him completely in this manner was yeah. too much for a lot of fans to handle. Number 2. Chris Jericho Chris Jericho the shocked the world at the 2001 Vengeance pay-per-view when he became the first ever undisputed champion. Sadly for Jericho, the run that followed was presented rather poorly and Jericho yeah. was never taken seriously as undisputed champion. Jericho had storylines with The Rock and Stone Cold during this time and whilst he attained victories over the two legends on pay-per-view, they were presented as flukes and never made Jericho seem like a serious world champion. Jericho mm -hmm. was also paired with Stephanie McMahon during this time and will be presented as Stephanie's personal lackey and Jericho would even begin to dog sit Stephanie's dog. Jericho eventually dropped the undisputed title to Triple H at WrestleMania 18 and wouldn't receive another world title run until 2008. And number one, Rey Mysterio. Mm. A WrestleMania 22 featured one of the most feel-good moments in WWE. Yeah. Yeah, this, that, him winning that is a heartfelt moment because you knew it was for Eddie. It, it it gives me goosebumps when he won that. It just it just does, bro. But what he went through, sixty minutes in that Royal Rumble, it was for Eddie. It, it just it just felt right. They pulled the trigger at the right time. Ah, it always it, it makes me emotional to see that, bro. It always makes me emotional. History: Ray would defeat Randy Orton and Kurt Angle to win the world title for the first time in his career. Popularity aside, Vince McMahon wasn't keen on making Mysterio world champion, and as a result, he outright buried Ray as world champion. Ray would lose a ton of matches on TV to the likes of RVD, Mark Henry, and the great Carly. This is true. He wouldn't even let Ray get victories over lower card talent such as Sabu, and as WWE decided to book their match at 2006 One Night Stand pay per view to end in a draw, they eventually decided to end Ray's run in the summer of 2006, where he lost the title to King Booker at the Great American Bash pay per view. Ray's run was a complete flop and WWE never made any effort at all to make Ray's world title run memorable for the right reasons. They did. They have it folks, 10 times WWE buried their own champions. This is true man. This is this is very true in the sense that even though he did win it, they didn't really treat him with that type of respect and care of someone that could win the matches they need to win. I always believe if you're a champion you should not be losing matches. You shouldn't. None title matches. You shouldn't be losing them. People are, should be trying to buy an opportunity to face you. I've never been a fan of that because if you're losing to that person in a non-title match, how am I supposed to take you seriously on beating them when the title's on the line? Like, I, I never liked that booking. It just it kind of weakens the champion. And, and in a lot of these instances, it did. It made the championship for that, that championship reign not memorable. So... Comment down below, let me know which uh, one do you feel like had the worst, like got buried the worst. In my opinion, I, I still got to give it to Kofi because he lost in a few seconds. And then he didn't even try to get his title back. He was an afterthought. As soon as it happened, he went right back to the mid card. Like nothing ever happened. Like he didn't just have one of the best moments in WrestleMania history. Just gone, dead. That definitely is uh, a number one for me. But appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.